Well, I'm delighted to be here as my co-author, Arun Malikar, is here with me. Uh, somewhere out there, I saw him. Uh, as it's suggested by the title, we've come up with what we believe is a, a six component integrated approach to addressing the retirement challenge. And the design is, is really to work anywhere in the world. It isn't tailored to a particular you know, Anglo-Saxon or uh, the superannuation system. Uh, and so what I propose to do is, in this my 20 minutes, is to take you through what these six are. And I, we say integrated because really we look at it as all coming together. But let me underscore that this is modular. You don't have to do all six together and you can do them. But we do believe that for a long-term sustainable system, we're going to need all six. It's not going to be good enough to just focus on, on a handful. So with that, I'd like to go through those six briefly and then focus on a couple of specific cases that will drive it home, I hope. Before we talk about anything, I thought it would be good to say, you know, when we talk about what, what is a, you know, why, what's the whole purpose of the system, it's to give us a good retirement. And most people would agree that's what they want, but very few really know what that involves and what it takes. And I use this reference point here to be clear that I consider it would be a good retirement is if you had uh, sufficient resources so that you could enjoy and sustain the standard of living that you did in the latter part of your work life for the rest of your life. Hardly a very original idea, but that's what I'll use. And I bring this up because if you agree with this, then you see standard of living is always defined not by a pot of money or accumulation, but by a sustainable stream of income. And that's very, very important because in particularly the DC part of the systems, uh, that's not being taken into account and has profound impacts. Now going beyond that, I also want to put in a reality check. If I have a goal of a good retirement, we set that, then if I look at what I'm doing and ask myself, what's the prospects of getting to that good retirement and they don't look very good, then there are only four ways to improve the chances of getting there. Save more, which means, of course, consume less, work longer, or take more investment risk. But if you do, you better have plan B that says what happens if the risk is realized. The big mistake, particularly with long term planning here, is to take the benefits of taking risk in the sense of expected returns being higher, but then pretends or acts like those returns will actually be earned so we don't have to worry about the risk. Those, each of those three are involved in increasing the assets. The fourth one is saying, whatever assets you have at retirement, get the most benefits you can from them without changing risk and without and getting there preferably without having to change saving behavior. So it's more about getting more benefits from what you have. All right, with that, let's jump to the six, the six elements. The first one we could call pillar zero. Pillar one has different names in the US, Social Security, in Australia, it's the age pension, DV pension plans, employer plans. They all have the feature basically. You know, these are kind of, we're the gold standard and people love them. They don't have to do anything. They tell them how much employment they're gonna have with their retirement and they said, it, forget it. They don't have to do anything. Uh, that's very nice, except as was mentioned in earlier is that uh, they, they just can't, they can't cover the whole of retirement. And so now I wanna to move to the next step, which is where the action is, pillar two, which is DC. Um, and I wanna just mention three areas of immediate need for improving the DC plans. The first is to recognize for most of people's work life, certainly the early parts, but I would say really up to, you know, not maybe 10 years from retirement, I don't know what the date is, for most of it, people aren't thinking about retirement at all. And it's very hard to get them engaged in it. Yes, they know they want a good retirement, but they, they're, they're engaged in building their career. So it's really important to make DC plans have the ability to be as easy or as close to as easy as a DV plan, meaning you practically have to do nothing uh, at least for a good part of the time they're in the plan. And that can be done with a good, smart, comprehensive default offering, which gathers information about each member in both personal and uh, market, and then adjusts the investment to a goal that's set 
along the lines of what I described as being a good retirement, none of which the individual member has to make any decisions or even provide the information. This is doable and we've been doing it for some time in the private sector. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is at some point they do become engaged. And then we would say here, have a very robust design tool for engaged members to tailor their incomes. Now I'm gonna underscore something that's not just about retirement, it's about financial services in general, which I've been involved in for half a century. So I'm not pointing fingers at others. I've been in this. And that is we do a terrible job at our products and our designs. We, we, we make everything as if everybody understands finance, compound interest, rates of return, efficient frontiers and so forth and so on. There was allusion to it before how complex it is to transform amount of money into an income stream. And that's not, that's a very poor design for products. And let me quickly give you two examples, big examples from consumer products that are important to people, cars and mobile phones. If you get into a car, if you get into a, a, a 1955 Ford, it has a steering wheel, it has an accelerator that you put your foot on. And if you get into a 2020 Ford, you'll be amazed, but it still has the steering wheel, still has an accelerator, same place. In fact, if you were to push it with your foot or turn the wheel, they feel exactly the same. That's not an accident. Their design is that instead of telling people to get educated so they can buy the product, they design the product to be, to be used by what people already know. Now that sounds simple, but it's amazingly important and we don't do it. So if you rent a car you've never driven before, you're very likely to be able to do it because of the way it's designed. It uses what you know. And we can do that in finance and it has a dramatic impact. Same thing with mobile phones. You want something more, you know, more uh, sexy or whatever. And if you have one of those and you have to have look, the customer has to look at the manual, you're in trouble. In general, the manuals are just on the internet in case something goes wrong. And by and large, it's supposed to be taken out of the box and be able to use it based on the information that that, that, that person already has. And that's something that can be done and should be done. And finally, while in the early part or a good part of the retirement uh, accumulation phase, people aren't thinking about retirement, the opposite happens as people approach retirement. Suddenly they find them having to make very important decisions. They have a deadline and it can be overwhelming. So it's very important with DC plans to build a smooth transition from accumulation to the pay down phase. And it should be very customizable at retirement because even for working middle-class people uh, who have relatively simple financial lives, where they are when they reach retirement is all over the lot. Some people start fa new families when they're 60s. I'm not recommending it, but it's happened. Some people have a lot of people responsible for them or responsible for, to look after them. Others are on their own. And so we have to have a very flexible, customized set of pay down phases that are easy to use. Third proposition called pillar theory, many countries, including my own United States, have uncovered workers. These are workers that are not covered by any plan, but they still have to deal with retirement. And even those that are in plan like social security or age pension, um, it may not be enough. So they need to save on personal account. So how do you get people to be able to do that without an advisor, without reading, going, getting educated and so forth? Well, we designed, Arun and I, uh, our version is called selfies what we call is a pension bond. And what the idea is that you build a, you get a bond. You know, everybody understands and loves pensions. You put your money in, you contribute, you get nothing until you retire. And then when you retire, you get a stream of income for many years, all right? But that's the feature. What we said is why not just create a government bond, this regular government bond, nothing, nothing fancy, except the payments on it are look strange compared to normal bonds. Namely, you, put your, you buy the bond, it makes no payments for many, many years while the whole time basically until retirement. And then when you get to retirement, it pays a level set of payments 
with no balloon payment at the end. I'll come back to that to show why I think we think that's exciting point, but it's a way to deal with uncovered workers because now they can save for themselves without having to be educated in rocket scientists. Number four, get more benefits from the assets at retirement. I alluded to that before, that there are ways in which to get much higher benefits without additional risk. For most people, the one that really, the two things that move the needle is the annuity. And I mean, a good example of annuity, not a bad one, or a poorly designed one. And the other is the house, namely taking the equity out of the house in order to finance the, the, the retirement. You, so I'll, I'll come back and give you an example of that. But basically the tool that was used that has a terrible name in my country, a reverse mortgage. In South Korea, I like the name, it's called the home pension. But that together with annuities can really move the needle. And I'll show you that in a minute. Now, the fifth one is if we're gonna have people working longer, then I think we need to design a systematically organized retirement friendly structure of providing employment for people who have reached retirement age or in the neighborhood of retirement age and so forth. And what I mean by that is not make work jobs or something, but building around what are the comparative advantages of seniors uh, and taking account of the fact that they, they don't want and they don't need to build a career and they don't want to spend a lot of time with the learning curve. And employers don't want to invest a lot if they can only be working for a short time. But they bring a lot of experience. They bring knowledge and maybe because I'm in that group, uh, I think we're calmer than maybe some of our younger people. And so we have jobs that instead of trying to fit people in jobs that they did 20 years before, we actually design jobs at, at, for which seniors are better. And these can range from, you know, planting flowers and so forth in the parks and so forth. It's just beautiful, not, not make work, but beautiful. It can be if someone's trained as an engineer, bring them into the schools. Uh, they're probably very good with young, very, very young children, you know, that don't move around a lot, but need attention. Most of them have some pretty good experience there. So the idea is to have from both the public and private sector, an organized way of these types of jobs that are recognized the benefits of seniors so that seniors can think about those as part of the, what they have available for their retirement. And not only does this provide cash flow, at, but it also provides, I think, a wonderful way to smoothly taper the work experience. Very few people like to be working full time and then suddenly the next day they're retired and this would do it. And by the way, more generally, I think it would make the labor force more productive. Last, really motivated, or if you like, COVID-19 experience, and I know in Australia, among many countries that you're faced this, which is that look at the retirement system and ask the question, not to make it a general savings plan, but can it be part of what we might call a broader life cycle crisis, not just for the retirement part of the life cycle, but also taking account the other parts of the life cycle, particularly when there are shocks to the system. And it's perfectly consistent with lifetime smoothing of consumption. We normally believe that most people would prefer to have smooth consumption between work and retirement, not live on dog food while they're working so they can dine on crystal when they retire or the reverse. If that's true, then if you have a shock to your wealth, you have a shock to your system now, which uh, that makes you poor. Absolutely, therefore, one should respond, not just by taking that hit in terms of current consumption, but smooth it out over the lifetime. And so if one has accumulated towards a target or a goal that's higher than when we're we consuming now, it makes perfectly good sense if you draw down on that accumulation, not just borrow against it, actually draw down on it to smooth out consumption. People more probably would prefer a 90-90 mix versus 80-100. So we bring these six together and we believe put together and together, it provides, covers all, all the bases and is sustainable. Now, again, this alludes to some of the earlier comments. In DC plans, as I've mentioned, we always show them the accumulated balance. 
And we wonder why, you know, in the spirit of how can they make understand where they are and make reasonable decisions. Take someone who's fortunate enough to have a million dollar balance in their account, let's say they're in their 40s. Ask them the question. And I mean by this, not one of my brilliant MIT colleagues, 150 IQ, three PhDs, nanotechnology. Ask them, knowing this balance, how, how are they doing on their role in retirement? Is that a lot? Is it a little? Where are they? And they won't be able to answer it. And frankly, you really can't answer it just with that information. Why do I say that? Well, I'll just use quickly numbers from my own country. 15 years ago, the 10-year treasury bond yielded 5%. On a million dollars, that's $50,000 a year income without dipping into principal. What is it today? 90 basis points, that's 9,000 a year. So your million dollars in the United States, same instrument, at one point, 50,000 a year, and another 9,000. These are real numbers. So since income is what matters, the balance is neither sufficient and it's just not justful. Now let's just say, suppose instead, we showed people what their balance could buy not dream, not wishes, but actually could buy based on market prices in terms of income and retirement and doing it in dollars or of current dollars so people can relate to them. And here you see example, somebody was, let's say earning 80,000 a year. You say to them with what you have, you could have $55,000 a year in retirement income. Instantly, people know what that means. All of us do. You could, if it's in the same year dollars, this year dollars, if you're living on 55, I mean, you're living on 80 income and you have 55, you might say, oh boy, that's not gonna be any good. Others might say, you know, with no children, like they're all grown up, hey, that might be fine. But you don't need to go to school. You don't have to learn finance. You don't have to study all these things. You don't have to have an advisor. You instantly know what that means and where you are. And that allows you to have a sense of where you, you know, what you need, do you need to buy more or not? And by the way, that relates to the selfies. The selfies themselves are, uh, as I say, described as a stream of income, let's say $10 per year per bond and in, in retirement. And so if you buy a thousand bonds, that's 10,000 a year. And if you buy 30, 3,000 bonds, 30,000 a year. And you can relate that income to where you are as long as it's done in current dollars. But it's very important to use market prices. It's the same with accumulated balance. Instead of showing you your actual balance, what if they said, this is what we think your balance would be worth if, if the market was doing what we think it should, or this is what your balance was worth in the past. Not very useful. So it's very important that this is presented with income. Now going to the selfies very briefly in my last few minutes, let me just show you an example of designing an instrument and the, just a little detail, the importance of the detail design, how important it is. On the upper part of this picture, you see the payouts to, a, to the kind of pension bond I described. The blue going down is your, when you buy it, and then for the next 35, 38, 40 years even, you, uh, you uh, get nothing, you get no payments like a zero coupon bond, and then when you reach the retirement date, you get a stream of level payments, exactly what you would get in a pension. So therefore, you know, if you retire when you're expected to, how many decisions are needed with that? How many, how many transactions are needed with that? If you retire when you plan to retire, one, when you buy it. And you don't have to do anything again. By the way, it's a bond. So if something happens to you, you change your mind, you get ill, do anything you want, you can sell it. If you pass away, it can be bonded. So it, it has nothing else to do with it. Now, someone say, hey, you can do just about the same things with 30 year bonds, okay? Well, the, the lower graph shows the payout if they bought 30 year bonds. Uh, typically the bond pays a coupon every six months. So that means every six months, the person who bought these bonds, these government bonds, has to make a decision and has to make a transaction. 61 of them in 30 years. What's the other problem? In this case, they're not retiring for 38 years. So when they get this lump sum of the bond 30 years from now, they have a gap of eight years 
they have interest rate risk and they have to reinvest it in their all kinds of decisions. So although people will say a bond's good enough, it's not. And finally, I would point out with this example that what does it take to know where you are? As I said before, if each of these bonds pay $10 a year, you have 3,000 bonds, that's 30,000 a year income. You don't need anything else to know. You don't notice there's nothing about yield here. There's nothing about compound return. You don't have to do any of the finance things that people have to go through gyrations to do. And this is a natural way to do it, to teach people or show people, give them products based on what they know and understand. And someone with a sixth grade education can understand this. So last in my last one, two minutes, I mentioned about enhancing benefits for a given level of accumulation. And just to show you, I use US numbers here and our reverse mortgages are not, in my view, very well designed, but they work. And here's a, a, someone in the 50th percentile, $50,000 income, uh, retirement goal, $36,000. You know, it's a replacement sharp, you all know this, with a house, a DC accumulation and social security. Now, if they just take the social security and take their accumulation and live on bond interest, this is when interest rates were higher, they get 60% of their goal. But if instead they're buying, just living off the interest on the bond because they don't know how long they live, if they bought a life annuity, then they could improve their benefits for as long as they need money, as long as they need income. Even if they live to be 120 years, all the good books wish us, they'll never run out of money. That's what people like about pensions as well. So there we can go from 60 to 77%. If they now do a reverse mortgage, which I remind you, there are no payments of principal of interest as long as they live in the house. And if this is the house they're gonna live in for their retirement life, that means there are no payments on either interest and principal for their whole life, their whole retirement. In that case, if they take that, and this is the standard rule, what they could get, they take the money from the reverse mortgage, which is really just taking the part of the value of the house that they don't need because they don't need a house after they, uh, leave it. And when they do that and add that in, they move from 77 to 100%. So just to say what we see here is how much by just taking advantage of these two big, big impact things. And if you'll notice, this is what most working middle class people have on their personal savings. They have a house, maybe modest, but they have a house, maybe a bank account. They don't have stocks and bonds and property. So this is very practical and it works everywhere in the world. So I'll stop on that, take questions. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, you've been sort of talking about a lot of things that um, are sort of very interesting to academics and policymakers and industry in this country.